Hi all, uh, welcome to today's NABH fifth edition training webinar. Okay, so before we get started, so let me just uh, thank you for your time because it's a very precious hour, like three to four is very important at your work. Still, people have taken out time and attended it. So this shows that uh, we are interested to learn something new and we'll make sure that this one hour will change the way how you think about an NABH further next. Okay. Hospitals work round the clock to serve patients. Being at the center of the action, hospital physicians and staff must confront every situation and every challenge. They must also keep up with evolving health needs and knowledge through ongoing comprehensive training programs. What they need is a promising solution to ensure a continuous learning journey. In today's world, technology is transforming life. Be it taxis, food delivery, everything we need is at our fingertips. Education is also going through a transformation, and we are at the forefront in the healthcare industry. MedLearn is a comprehensive learning, training, and skill development platform incubated at Impelsys in India for healthcare professionals to attain the right mix of content, learning, and skills that help them throughout their career. The platform offers a wide variety of courses that enable hospitals to meet their employee training and development needs in areas of quality compliance, soft skills and induction. The platform is designed in a way that it enables easy tracking of the real-time status of their learning progress. What's unique about this platform is that it's accessible anytime, anywhere, ensuring quality learning literally at your fingertips. Hospitals can now assign courses and track the competencies of users on specific topics with MedLearn's intelligent assessment tool, which gives them better administrative control. Its superior courseware helps hospitals provide standardized care and bridge skill gaps at every level in the organization. The healthcare professionals will also become more efficient and empowered when their learning journey progresses with ease and at their convenience. Let us unite to improve healthcare in India by spreading knowledge through technology. MedLearn. Better prepared for better care. Hospital. Yes, once again, welcome all. Okay. So thanks, uh, Subhashree, for the video. And I think you have set the stage for today. Okay. So let us get started with this. Let me just first introduce the speaker for the day. Okay. So thank you, uh, Elizabeth, ma'am. So who has taken out time for her work and uh, doing it for us. So thanks once again. So let me just introduce about uh, what is uh, Elizabeth's uh, career and how it is. So first of all, uh, Elizabeth has more than 30 years of experience into this healthcare division, worked under different domains, different hospitals, different qualifications and different roles. So majorly, I think we can take up lot, uh, like four to five important achievements in her career is the first thing I think we can say like uh, she is she is awarded as the prestigious Karnataka State Florence Nightingale Award 2014 at the best assistant nursing superintendent. Fantastic, ma'am. Very great achievement. Okay, and over her 30 years of experience, she worked as nurse. She works into the nursing department. She worked as mid wifery. She worked into many leadership roles like nursing supervisor, clinical educator, nursing superintendent and chief of nursing services for prestigious Columbia Hospital Bangalore. And she also worked 
uh, into Fortis hospitals at different roles. And right now, uh, she is working as assistant superintendent in Sakra World Hospital and assistant general manager for quality and patient safety Sakra World Hospital. And right now, her designation because she is into multiple roles and she is into multiple things. So right now, she is into medical safety officer at Sakra World Hospital, Bangalore. So once again, thank you, ma'am, for being part of this. Okay, so this one hour is for you. And we, out of this one hour, we need to get the complete knowledge of NABH and why it is NABH, why it is so much important, why do hospitals, why do governments insist so much on this? So what if we, if we don't have an NABH, what happens for a hospital? If you have an NABH, what happens for a hospital? So these are all some of the things that uh, uh, Elizabeth will be covering out, ma'am. Okay, so over to you, ma'am. So now you can share your screen and you can introduce yourself and over to you. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can. Hi, good afternoon to all. Uh, my, name is my name is Elizabeth Johnson. I am working as medical safety at present. And uh, today my topic is NABH. So before going to NABH, I wanted to start with one statement by Peter Drucker. The best way to predict the future is to create it. So what do we think about when we choose a hospital? When you fall sick, what, what are all the things you will think? Like in your mind, what will come? Does it offer what I want? Can I afford the services? Are the doctors competent? Is the nursing staff competent? Will the staff explain my condition to me? How is the accuracy of the investigation reports? Am I safe in this place? There are a lot of questions will come to our mind. So are hospitals safe? I am leaving it to you. You can think, are hospitals safe? You are taken for the wrong surgery. You get wrong medication. You develop a blood transfusion reaction. You fall in the bathroom and fracture your leg. Someone reads your medical file and leaks medical information about you to your friends. You step on a broken needle and you injure yourself and two newborn babies are switched. So all these things can happen. So then uh, how hospitals are, how we can make hospitals safe. If you follow set of standards, we can make our hospital safe. From where we will get set of standards? We can get it from NABH. What NABH will do for that? NABH will give accreditation. How NABH is going to give accredit accreditation to the hospital? So NABH has got set of standards. And if you meet all these standards, the NABH will come and audit you. Then you will get recognized by NABH and you will get a certificate saying that your hospital is accredited. So what is accreditation? First of all, it is a voluntary process. Nobody will come and tell you that you should go for accreditation. It is voluntary process by management. The management will think, okay, I have to provide quality care. So I have to go for uh, NABH. So then we have to initiate for quality care and patient safety. We have to go for accreditation uh, in India we are going to get it NABH, National Accreditation Board for Hospitals and Healthcare Providers. That means not only for big hospital, all healthcare providers can get NABH. So this is what NABH, National Accreditation Board for Hospitals and Healthcare Providers, and it is constituent board of the Quality Council of India, recognized by ISHQA, and has collated the fifth edition standard, standard for hospitals 
And the focus of NABH is patient safety, staff safety, environmental safety, and quality of patient care. Why we want to go for NABH? That is, what NABH will do? Revalidate our process and systems. Actually, we have to make our own SOP as per NABH standards. Then NABH will go through our standard operating procedures, revalidate our process and systems, ensure that we are doing the right things and doing them well, significantly reduce the risk of harm in the delivery of care and increase the confidence of the public in our services. And what is the benefit? Who is the biggest beneficiary of NABH? Patients are the biggest beneficiary of NABH because accreditation results in high quality of care and patient safety. The patient gets services by credentialed medical staff and rights of patients are respected and protected and patient satisfaction is regularly monitored and evaluated. And what is the benefit for staff? If they work in uh, accredited hospital, NABH accredited hospital, what is the benefit for staff? There will be well-defined process and systematic approach and clarity on job description and specification. Staff in an accredited hospital are satisfied a lot as it provides for continuous learning. There is always learning on the job training good working environment, leadership, and above all, ownership of process. And it improves overall professional development of clinicians and paramedical staff and provides leadership for quality improvement within medicine and nursing. And what is the benefits for organization if we go for accreditation? Accreditation to hospital stimulates continuous improvement. It enables hospital in demonstrating commitment to quality care. It raises community confidence in the services provided by the hospital. It also provides opportunity to hospital to benchmark with the best. We can benchmark with other hospitals also. It also helps for TPA, third party administration for insurance. And NABH, about NABH again, there are 10 chapters, the guide how it is organized. There are 10 chapters and standards are 100 and objective elements are 651 and KPIs there are 32. And the first five, cha the chapters are divided into first five and second five. The first five chapters are patient-centered. The second five chapters are management-centered. The first five chapters patient-centered are Access, Assessment, and Continuity of Care, short form AAC, and Care of Patient, COP, Management of Medication, MOM, Patient Rights and Education, PRE, and Hospital Infection Control, HIC. These are the first patient-centered chapters. And second five chapters are Patient Safety and Quality Improvement, PSQ, Responsibility of Management, ROM, Facility Management and Safety, FMS, and Human Resource Management, HRM, Information Management System, IMS. How are these standards organized? Each chapter incorporates the following, like intent of the standards. When you open guidebook, you can see, first, Intent of the standard, summary of the standard, then standard, objective elements, and interpretation, glossary, and KPI. This is the way the book is, guidebook is organized. For example, this is the discharge. Uh, AAC 14, organization defines the content of the discharge summary. So, AAC is the chapter. AAC 14 is the standard. The organization that the description of the standard is organization defines the content of the discharge summary. So below mentioned are the objective element. These are the objective element. Discharge summary is provided to the patient at the time of discharge, and discharge summary contains the patient name, unique identification number, date of admission, and the date of discharge. Discharge summary contains the reason for admission, significant findings, 
diagnosis and the patient's condition at the time of discharge. Discharge summary contains information regarding investigation result, any procedure performed, medication administered, and other treatment given. And follow-up advice, medication, and other instructions in an understandable manner. And discharge summary incorporates instructions about when and how to obtain urgent care. In case of death, the summary of the case includes cause of death. This is, these are the objective elements. Again, each and every objective element, there are interpretation. If you want to know what to be like each uh, objective element meant, you have to go through interpretation. Next is uh, KPIs. There are total 32 KPI. Again, this is an example. I have taken two examples taken. PSQ 4C, time taken for discharge. That is the indicator. The discharge process is deemed to have started when the consultant form formally approves discharge and ends with the patient leaving the clinical or, or unit. Some of uh, the formula is sum of time taken for discharge divided by number of patients discharged. So the unit is minutes and frequency should be monthly. And uh, again, remarks in case patients request additional time to leave the clinical unit, that shall not be added. That means the patient already paid everything, everything is all the procedure done for the discharge. Again, if the patient is requesting to stay back, then that is not added. So the discharge is deemed to have been complete when the formalities for the same have been completed. Another example I have taken, PSQ4C. PSQ is the chapter. And percentage of medical records having incomplete and or improper consent. In informed consent is a type of consent in which the healthcare provider has a duty to inform his or her patient about the procedure, its potential risk and benefits alternative procedure or treatment with their risk and benefits so as to enable the patient to take an informed decision of his or her health care. So the formula is number of medical records having incomplete and or improper consent divided by number of discharges and deaths into 100 because this is percentage. And the remarks which it is given and frequency can be monthly. If any of the essential element requirement of consent is missing, it shall be considered as incomplete. If any consent obtained is invalid or void, consent obtained from wrong person or consent obtained by wrong person, et cetera, it is considered as improper. Next, we'll see that fifth edition, there are a few changes like they have done the leveling of all objective elements. Leveling means the first level, like when we are going for the final assessment. Final assessment means nothing but when we are first time, when we are going for accreditation is only final assessment. Pre-assessment, first they all will come and check. Pre-assessment, whatever we are, like self-assessment toolkit is there. As per that, we have to, in the organization only should do. And then the NABH will uh, send the people uh, to audit for pre-assessment after that final final means first accreditation so then the commitment level there are commitment level ma'am your screen to... your screen is not going next just second is it going front back can you just stop sharing and again reshare it On the top, you can see stop sharing once and again, you can start sharing. Who is there? Yeah, just... Uh... Yeah, can you just put on to next slide once? Can check 
is the slide is moving out or not let's take out the next slide no the slides are not going up um i'm going to stop share sharing and no no not it hmm. can you see can you see now no can you just stop sharing once ma'am and just again reshare it yeah uh, you can share share now yes now can you see yes you can make it a slash also okay yeah okay yeah done so these are the levels commitment level uh, that is the final assessment that means first time we are going for accreditation so commitment level uh, and achievement level uh, surveillance that is one and a half years after one and a half years there is a surveillance that is achievement level excellence level reaccreditation that is what different types of level and let us see in each level how many objective elements are there like commitment level uh, 461 Commit, commitment level objective elements are there and then another 100 core objective elements are there core is something mandatory it is uh, all core elements are um, uh, it is like patient safety point of view uh, it is there and commitment level 461 plus 100 when we go for first time uh, nabh accreditation we should at least 80% compliance should be there then when they come for audit they won't see achievement level of 60 so because the first first time uh, they won't be auditing your achievement level or excellence level that is not applicable first time it is only applicable commitment level total 561 objective element you should meet at least your compliance should be 80% that means the score is 5 at least 4 you should get it that i will later i'll explain so this is the scoring system so uh, if you are getting 80 in case if you are getting like 3 80% means some of them will be 3 and below 3 if it is like that when the uh, surveillance audit comes you have to get all this uh, below 3 also should get it 4 so this is a scoring system like scoring system in fifth edition there is no zero scoring system in fifth, fifth edition it is started from 1 to 5 so this is the scoring non compliance one is non compliance no system in place no evidence towards implementation and implementation is uh, this time uh, not only documentation more than documentation implementation only focused as per nabh fifth edition so no evidence see whatever we have written that implementation also should be there and if it is less than 20 or equal to 20% sample meet the requirement of objective element and non conformity exist then we will get only one and two poor compliance that means uh, limited system in place some evidence of working towards implementation 21 to 40 percent sample meet requirement of objective element and non conformity exist. And three scoring three partial compliance system are partially in place. There is evidence towards implementation and 41 to 60 percent sa samples meet requirement of objective element and non conformity exist. And good compliance is four systems are in place. there is evidence of working towards implementation and 61 to 80% sample meet requirement of objective element and non -conform conformity could exist it will be there but it is not many 
and full compliance is filed and system are in place, evidence of implementation across the organization and 81 to 100% samples meet requirement of objective element, no non-conformity. So next we will start from NABA chapter wise. So the first chapter, as I told you, AAC the chapter, intent of the chapter provides information about the scope of hospital service, admits only those patients who can be cared, provides life stabilizing treatment to emergency patients and then admit or transfer them to another organization. That meaning is a patients may come and sometimes they are not affordable, they may choose other hospitals. So we are supposed to stabilize the patient first, then only should decide uh, either we have to transfer other hospital or we should get, we should admit the patient as per their recommend. And conducts appropriate initial and periodic reassessment for all inpatients, provides laboratory and imaging services that commensurate with the scope, provides continuous and multidisciplinary patient care, has a well-defined transfer and discharge protocol. This is the intent of the chapter. These are the summary of the standard. The organization defines and displays the healthcare services that it provides. AAC2, the organization has a well-defined registration and admission process. AAC3, there is an appropriate mechanism for transferring and transfer out or referral of patients. And four, patient cared for by the organization undergo an established initial assessment. AAC5, patient cared cared for by the organization undergo a regular reassessment and six laboratory services are provided as per the scope of services of the organization. ASC 7, there is an established laboratory quality assurance program. ASC 8, there is an established laboratory safety program. And ASC 9, imaging services are provided as per the scope of service of the organization. 10, there is an established quality assurance program for imaging services. 11, there is an established safety program in imaging services. And patient care is continuous and multidisciplinary. 12 and 13, organization has an established discharge process. The organization defines the content of the discharge summary. These are the su uh, summary of the standards. Under e uh, each uh, summary, uh, there is uh, each standard, there is there are objective elements but uh, i cannot explain all the objective elements so the first uh, scope under scope there are four objective element and then interpretation will be there and the registration and admission five are there and then interpretation and transfer and referral four initial assessment seven reassessment five lab 10 Lab quality assurance six, lab safety four, imaging 10, imaging quality assurance eight, imaging safety seven, continuous and multidisciplinary eight. This all objective element and discharge process six, discharge summary seven. And total 91 objective elements are there under AAC. And next is COP, intent of the chapter. Uh, the organization provides uniform care to all patient in various settings and adheres to the written guidance for patient care, organ donation, and procurement applicable laws and regulations guide. There are guidance we have to follow. For example, uh, hospital infection control, we are following CDC and WHO. Like that, written guide, uh, guideline, uh, guidance will be there. That only we have to follow. Addresses pain management, nutritional therapy, and rehabilitative services, and guides and encourages patient safety. These are the intent of the COP. Actually, in summary, when it comes, COP chapter is like care of patients. It is a big chapter. Uh, AAC and COP is a very big uh, chapter. And standards are more. And objective elements also more. COP uniform care to patient is provided in all settings of organization as it, and is guided by written guidance and the applicable laws and everywhere it is mentioned written guidance and applicable laws and regulations. And COP2 emergency services are provided in accordance with the written guidance applicable, applicable laws and regulations. And COP3 ambulance services ensure safe patient transportation with appropriate care. COP4, the organization plans and implements mechanism for the care of patients during community emergencies, epidemic, 
epidemics and other disasters. COP5 cardiopulmonary resuscitation services are provided uniformly across the organization. COP6 nursing care is provided to patients in the organization in consonance with clinical protocols. Seven clinical procedures are performed safely and eight transfusion services are provided as per the scope of services of the organization safely. The organization provides care in intensive care and high dependency units in a systematic manner. The organization provides safe obstetric care. Organization provides safe pediatric services. Procedural sedation is provided consistently and safely. Anesthesia services are provided in a consistent and safe manner. Surgical services are provided in a consistent and safe manner. The organ transplant program is carried out safely. The organization identifies and manages patients who are at higher risk of morbidity and mortality. Pain management for patients is done in a consistent manner. Rehabilitation services are provided to the patient in a safe, collaborative and consistent manner. Nutritional therapy is provided to patient consistently and collaboratively. End of life care is provided in a compassionate and considerate manner. And uh, these are the uh, under COP objective element, uniform care, eight emergency services, 10 ambulance services, nine community emergencies, epidemics and other disaster, and four cardiopulmonary resuscitation, six nursing care, eight clinical procedure, eight transfusion service, eight intensive care and high dependency unit, eight obstetric care, seven pediatric, seven procedural sedation, eight and anesthesia services 10, surgical services 10, organ transplant program 4, morbidity and mortality 6, pain management 4, rehabilitation services 7, nutritional therapy 5, end of life care 5. So these are the objective elements. These are the number of objective elements and should go through that and interpretation also. MOM, management of medication. In the end of the chapter, the organization has a safe and organized medication process to ensure that pharmacy has an oversight of all medications stocked outside of pharmacy. There is a mechanism to ensure that emergency medications are standardized, readily available, and replenished in a timely manner. As a mechanism for safe use of high-risk medications, safety is paramount when using narcotics, chemotherapeutic agents, and radioactive agents. There should be a process for monitoring a patient after medication administration has a procedure for reporting and analyzing near misses, medication errors, and adverse drug, rea drug reaction, it ensures av availability of medical supplies and consumables, and medications also include blood, implants, and devices. So these are the uh, summary of standard MOM. Pharmacy services and usage of medication is done safely to the organization develops, updates, and implements a hospital formulary. And the MOM3, medications are stored appropriately and are available where required. Four, medications are prescribed safely and rationally. Five, medication orders are written in a uniform manner. And six, medications are dispensed in a safe manner. Medications are administered safely. Patients are monitored after medication administration. And nine, narcotic drugs and psychotropic substance, chemotherapeutic agents and radioactive agents are used safely. And MOM10, implantable prosthesis and medical devices are used in accordance with laid down criteria. MOM11, medical supplies and consumables are stored appropriately and are, av and are available where required. These are the summary of the standard. And it's all MOM as per the objective element, number of objective elements, pharmacy services and usage of medication five, hospital formulary six, storage of medication seven, prescription of medication eight, medication order four, dispensing medicine, medication six, medication administration 11, patient monitoring six, narcotic drugs and psychotropic agents five, implants, prosthesis and medical device five, Medical supplies five. Total 68 objective elements are there under MOM. PRE, very important chapter. Intent of the chapter is the organization defines, protects, and promotes patients and their family rights. 
and patients are informed of their rights and educated about their responsibilities at the time of entering the organization and informs patient about their responsibilities. Ensure that the staff are trained to protect patient rights and responsibilities, provides information about expected cost of treatment and care, obtains informed consent from patient or family, understand that patients and family have right to information, provides information and education about healthcare in language and manner patient and their family can understand, develops an effective patient-centric communication. The summary of uh, PRE, patient rights and education. Uh, the organization protects and promotes patient and family rights and informs them about their responsibilities during care. PRE2, patient and family rights support individual beliefs, values, and involve the patient and family in decision-making process. Three, the patient and family members are educated to make informed decisions and are involved in the care planning and delivery process. The four is informed consent is obtained from the patient or family about their care. And five is patient and families have a right to information and education about their healthcare needs. PRE6, patients and families have a right to information on expected cost. PRE7, the organization has a mechanism to capture patients' feedback and to re redress complaints. PRE8, the organization has a system for effective communication with patients and or families. These are the objective elements. Number of objective elements under PRE, there are 53 protects rights and responsibilities during care five, support individuals' beliefs, values, and involve the patient and family in decision-making process 12, involvement in care planning and delivery process seven, informed consent five, information and education about their healthcare needs nine, expected cost four, patient feedback and redressal complaints six, effective communication five. HIC, in the end of the chapter, the organization implements effective healthcare association infection prevention and control program aims at reducing, eliminating spread of HI to patient visitors and healthcare providers, ensure documentation of the program. The program is implemented across the organization, including clinical areas and support services. The organization provides adequate facilities and resources. The organization measures and acts to prevent or to reduce the risk of healthcare associated infection in patients and staff, adopt appropriate infection control measures, implements and monitors antimicrobial management program, perform surveillance activities to capture and monitor data. The program includes disinfection, sterilization activities, and biomedical waste management. These are, these are the intent of HIC, hospital infection control. The summary of this chapter, the organization has a comprehensive and coordinated hospital infection prevention and control program aimed at reducing, eliminating risk to patients, visitors, providers of care and community. HIC2, the organization provides adequate and appropriate resources for infection prevention and control. The organization implements the in infection prevention and control program in clinical areas. The organization implements the infection prevention and control program in support service. The organization takes action to prevent healthcare associated infections in patients. Organization performs surveillance to capture and monitor infection prevention and control data. Infection prevention measures include sterilization and disinfect disinfection of instruments, equipment and devices. The organization takes action to prevent or reduce healthcare associated infections in its staff. So these are the summary of the standards. So up under objective elements are hospital infection control program 10, resources for infection prevention and control five, implements the infection prevention and control program seven, infection control in support services six, six HI four, surveillance nine, sterilization and disinfection activities five, Prevent HI in staff five. Total 51 objective elements are there under hospital infection control uh, standard. I mean chapter. PSQ, intent of the chapter. Uh, the standard PSQ patient safety and quality improvement. The standards encourages patient safety and continual quality improvement, ensures documentation of patient safety and quality program. 
ensure that the program involves all area staff members, including department leaders and management, implements national, international patient safety goals and solutions, collects structures, process and outcome data, especially in high risk situations, performs quality improvement activities using appropriate quality tools, for example, clinical audits. Clinical audit shall be used as a tool to improve the quality of patient care. The organization should have a robust incident reporting system for all incidents, including Sentinel event. And Sentinel event shall be defined. All incidents are investigated and appropriate action is taken. The management should support the patient safety and quality program. So these are the summary of the standard. Organization implements a structured patient safety program. Organization Organization implements a structured quality improvement and continuous monitoring program. The organization identifies key indicators to monitor the structures, process, and outcomes which are used as a tool for continual improvement. The organization uses appropriate quality improvement tools for its quality improvement activities. There is an established system for clinical audit. The patient safety and quality improvement program are supported by the management. Incidents are collected and analyzed to ensure continual quality improvement. So type of incident, let us see that. There are uh, different type of incidents are there, near miss, no harm, adverse event, and sentinel event. So near miss is an unplanned event that did not result in injury, illness, or damage, but had the potential to do so. That means it is it was nearing to the patient, but it is got missed due maybe they themselves found out or somebody intervened. So then that is what it was about to near, but it is got missed. That is near miss. No harm is this is used synonymously with a near. This is exactly I have taken from an abuse. However, some authors draw a distinction between these two phrases. A near miss is defined when. An error is realized just in the nick of time and about abortive action is instituted to cut short its translation. In no harm scenario, the error is not recognized and the deed is done, but fortunately for the healthcare professional, the expected adverse event does not occur. The distinction between the two is important and is best ex exemplified by reactions to administered drugs in allergic patients. A prophylactic injection of cephalosporin may be stopped in time because it suddenly transpires the, that the patient is known to be allergic to penicillin, that is near miss. If this vital piece of information is overlooked and the cephalosporin administered, the patient may fortun fortunately not develop an anaphylactic reaction, no harm event. And adverse is an injury related to medical management in contrast to complication of the disease. Medical management includes all aspects of care, including diagnosis and treatment, failure to diagnose or treat, and the system and equipment used to deliver care. Adverse even may be preventable or non-preventable. Sorry. Sentinel event is, Next, it should come sentinel event. It is a uh, sentinel event means it's a due to our negligence. Uh, the that definition I'll show you later. So under PSQ again, objective elements, uh, the patient safety program. There are nine quality improvement and continuous monitoring eight. And key indicators nine quality improvement tool four clinical audit six. Management support for improvement program, seven incidents, six, and total number of objective elements are 49. Next is ROM. Intent of ROM is ensure that the ROM responsibility of management. Ensure that the management is aware and manages key components of governance, identifies those responsible for governance, and defines their roles. Encourage governors both professionally and ethically, defines the responsibilities of management and leaders of all levels, ensures that management execute their responsibility in compliance with all applicable regulations, ensures that patient safety and risk management issues are considered by leaders 
as integral part of patient care and hospital management. And summary of the standard ROM, the organization identifies those responsible for governance and their roles are defined. The organization is ethically managed by the leaders. The organization is headed by the leader who shall be responsible for operating the organization on a day-to-day -day basis. The organization displays professionalism in its functioning. The management ensures that patient safety aspect and risk management issues are an integral part of patient care and hospital management. So these are the objective element, responsibility for governance. This, this is not the number of objective element only I am showing. The description will be in the guidebook. The responsibility for governance, eight, managing organization by ethical manner, five, day-to-day -day operation by leader, six, professionalism in functioning, seven, patient safety and risk management, six, total 32 objective element, elements are there under ROM. Next is FMS, intent of the chapter, aims at providing safe and secure environment for all patient, family, staffs, and visitors, addresses issues related to facility, equipment, and internal physical environment, performs proactive risk analysis, conducts facility inspection rounds, and provides staff training on safety and disaster management, provides safe water, electricity, medical gases, and vacuum systems, implements program for medical and utility equipment management, plans for fire and non-fire emergencies, ensures that the entire premise is a non-smoking area, safely manages hazardous materials, aims at being energy efficient. So this is again, summary of the standard is, organization has a system in place to provide a safe and secure environment. FMS2, the organization's environment and facilities operate in a planned manner and promotes environment friendly measures. The third one is the organization's environment and facilities operate to ensure the safety of patients, their families, staff, and visitors. FMS4, the organization has a program for the facility engineering support services and utility system. FMS5, the organization has a program for medical equipment management. Six is organization has a program for medical gases, vacuum, and compressed air. The seventh one is the organization has plans for fire and non-fire emergencies within the facilities. This is under FMS. The objective element, number of objective elements are safe and secure en environment, five are there. Environment friendly measures, seven. Safety of patient, their family, staff, and visitors, six. Program for the facility, engineering support, services, and utility system, eight. Program for medical equipment management, eight. Program for medical gases, vacuum, and compressed air, six. Fire and non-fire emergencies, five. Total number of objective elements under FMS is R45. Next is HRM, intent of the chapter, human resource management. Under human resource management, uh, intent of human resource management, human resource are an asset for the effective and efficient functioning of the organization, identifies right number and skill mix of staff required to provide safe patient care, adheres to uniform and standardized recruitment system, orients staff to organization's environment and to their duties and responsibilities, plans for an ongoing professional training services, in-service education for all staff, a systematic and structured appraisal system for staff development, promotes physical and mental well-being of staff, ensures grievance handling mechanism and disciplinary procedure is in place, ensures credentialing and privileging of healthcare professionals. A document containing all such personal information has to be maintained for all staff. And these are the standards. The organization has a documented system of human resource planning. The organization implements a defined process for staff recruitment. Staffs are provided induction training at the time of joining the organization. There is an ongoing program for professional training and development of the staff. Staff are appropriately, appropriately trained based on their specific job description. Staff are trained in safety and quality related aspect. 
An appraisal system for evaluating the performance of staff exists as an integral part of the human resource management process and process for disciplinary and grievance handling is defined and implemented in the organization. The organization promotes staff well-being and addresses their health and safety needs. There is a documented personal information for each staff member. There is a process for credentialing and privileging of medical professionals permitted to provide patient care without supervision. There is a process for creden credentialing and privileging of nursing professionals permitted to provide patient care without supervision. There is a process for credentialing and privileging of paraclinical professionals permitted to provide patient care without supervision. So these are the uh, standards under HRM, Human Resource Management. So objective element, Human Resource Planning 7, recruiting staff 4, induction training 9, ongoing program pro for professional training 6, Training based on their job description six, training on safety and quality related aspect seven, appraisal system five, disciplinary and grievance handling six, health and safety needs five, personal file for each staff four, credential and privileging of medical professional six and nursing professional six, and for paraclinical professionals five. So the last one is in the uh, IMS. Informa information management system. Intent of the chapter is ensures availability of right information to the right person at the right time and includes management of hospital information system and all modalities of information communicated to staff, patient, visitors, and community. Directs data and information management to meet organization's needs and supports deliver of quality patient care, provides authentic, secure, and accurate information needs maintains confidentiality, integrity, and security of records, data, and information, ensures confidentiality of protected health information and safeguards it across all platforms, includes periodic review, revision, and withdrawal of obsolete information uh, in information management, and maintains complete and accurate medical records, ensures accuracy and av availability of medical records to appropriate care provider, ensures review of medical records at regular intervals. So this is a summary of the standard. IMS information needs of patient, visitors, staff, management, and external agencies are met. That is the first standard. Second is the organization has process in place for management and control of data and information. Third is the patient cared by, for by the organization have a complete and accurate medical record. And IMS4, the medical record reflects the continuity of care. Fifth one is organization maintains confidentiality, integrity, and security of records, data, and information. The organization ensures availability of current and relevant documents, records, data, and information, and provides for retention of the same. The organization carries out a review of medical records. These are the standards under IMS. Objective elements, information needs met, seven are there. Management and control of data, five. Complete and accurate medical record, seven. A reflects the continuity of care, eight. Confidentiality, integrity and security, six. Retention of documents, four. Review of medical record, seven. Total number, 44. So this is the last chapter. So you may be thinking why I am taking like this because NAPH, all 10 chapters, if we want to cover, it will take, like each chapter will take at least one and a half hours. So that is the reason very briefly, I have just all the standard I read and you know explained. Yeah. So great, ma'am. So great. Uh, thanks for that. So that's a wonderful yeah. presentation. You are just making sure that uh, this process really it takes a lot of time in a hospital to implement and get NABH for their hospital. But still, in within telling that within one hour is very difficult, but you covered it. And I think the audience uh, are also having that kind of information with them. So, uh, ma'am, you can just stop sharing the screen so that uh, you can have it. So, so, we have some couple of questions also. So, before we get to that, uh, uh, we'll just repeat questions for you, ma'am, so that uh, you can answer it. 
okay so uh, there is a question from uh, dr samir kumar okay so he is asking why there is a burden of having facilities of for pandemic or epidemic on private sector at their cost where it's a government responsibility as well why can't government provide some incentives for it uh, actually uh, for this question like government already i think government has done lot of things for the insurance and all these things for the staff okay so i am not very sure about you know why the government is not providing okay so to extend to that dr samir was asking code of medical ethics is not applicable to private organization as per government and high court so any relevance to put ethical parameters in nabh program yes code of conduct 2002 in rom it says we have to follow that whether it is private or the nabh says that oh great code of conduct 2002 that will come under rom responsibility of management okay yes so i think dr samir is this answered or anything there is no scope for innovation that is research and development which is needed in nabh program Ex us etc countries are into it no like nabh now it is started fifth edition is just april 2020 only initiated right it is for four years so after four years again they will see something like you know this this fifth edition itself like lot of feedback they have taken from assessors hospital even from uh, uh, like uh, senior level administrators and all then after that only they finalized this fifth edition okay so ma'am vandana there will be review okay so vandana ma'am you please elaborate the question you just mentioned as additional kpi so there is nothing added please elaborate that and one more question from neeraj kanwar is hospital management software required for nabh and what are all the highlighted features that should be available uh, available in the same in the software actually uh, nabh is not uh, saying that it it should be like soft copy or hard copy even we can produce hard copy also software something nabh related it is not at all uh, nowhere it is mentioned like that we should have soft software for nabh okay great so ma'am there is one more question is uh, is fifth edition also for shco or yeah, yes fourth edition only small healthcare organization uh, that is what providers healthcare providers means anyone can go for nabh that is especially it is voluntary process but it is for small healthcare organization also nabh is okay so uh, uh, meha ma'am is asking please share ppt ma'am this webinar will be uploaded on youtube just type as medlearn so you will get the latest uh, this webinar will be uploaded within 24 hours or max by monday we'll just do small editions and we'll do that so ma'am one more question why there is no accreditation or standardization of for government hospitals no now government hospitals also now it is going for nabh okay. i think in uh, bangalore lot so many hospitals are going for nabh okay so one more question what if i say nabh is a corrupt organization which is allowing hospitals to loot the patients there is no provisions for staff rights in nabh i don't think so nabh is uh, loot the patient i don't think so it is because uh, quality care only we are providing but then uh, it is i am not very sure about how they fix the like uh, insurance is there especially insurance people they uh, they were looking for uh, nabh accredited hospital because of the quality care and there is a standard that is why they are looking for nabh but i don't think so they are looting through nabh okay so we'll have last two questions ma'am okay how can we calculate per bed consumption of electricity per bed that i think that i am not the correct person i, I think facility uh, you know engineering team should tell 
Okay. So one more question, last and final question. NABH, do they have any standard cost fixation for patient charges? Do they fix no. any charges? No, no. They won't even see and uh, it is, and they, they cannot fix. They are, everything is only guidance, actually. All these things uh, depends upon the organization. Okay, fine. So thank you, ma'am. Because uh, because of running of time, uh, we are just cut shorting some questions. If the questions are coming up, uh, you can just you can just write it uh, the mail ID which is been uh, given at your chat, or you can also reach back to us. Okay, fine. Okay. So, okay. And one uh, final thing I wanted to mention: Sentinel event. Uh, actually, that adverse event has come double. Sentinel event means. Like due to negligence, if anything happens to the patient, permanent damage or loss of function or death, if it happens, that is sentinel event. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. So, uh, 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 as everybody wants to know uh, the course about, so we can, we are getting a lot of questions on this. Okay. So, let me just uh, 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 make sure that all the questions, how we can answer all these questions. Okay. So, uh, so uh, uh, to make sure that whatever uh, uh, Elizabeth Ma'am has given the complete uh, description of chapters, how do we learn that? Where do we learn that? Okay, is there uh, any? Yeah. I can say, uh, actually, uh, I think this MedLearn online program also, I think it's contained in NABH 5th edition. And it is uh, chapter-wise, it is there. And there are pre-tests and content and uh, uh, what is that? Uh, Pre-test and, and post-test and uh, some scenario also given. Okay. So I think it is a very good. Uh, yeah, thanks ma'am, we'll take it from there. Okay, so uh, to, as ma'am says that, where do we learn this? If I wanted to know more about NABH, I wanted to uh, uh, become uh, somewhere NABH assessor or I wanted to be an NABH consultant. A lot of people mm -hmm. were asking these questions. So to do, to make that, you first of all, we should be very good with NABH 5th edition. Okay. Yes. For that, MedLearn has bought a program called as MedLearn Training Certificate Program for NABH 5th edition. So where we give all these 10 chapters, 100 standards, 651 objectives in a package for you. Okay. At on your mobile phone. So MedLearn as an app, you can just open the app and you can just start uh, going through that. Okay, so I think everything is covered by uh, ma'am. So I, I'll just go, uh, all these chapters, where, whatever chapters you are seeing, every chapter is covered here. So what is this program is about and how can I get, who is this, who can take up the course? Any hospital administrator, any quality managers, any nurse, any nursing student, any physicians, any elite, health professionals can take up this course because this is a management course. So this, we are working with hospitals with across the department. So the course is completely comes to you at only 15,000 rupees. We have a surprise inside. Okay. And you'll be getting individual standard certificate. You'll get hundred standard certificates when you clear hundred with a pre-test, post-test and uh, uh, which you clear out of six out of 10, you need to get minimum six to get your certificate. And this course module, what we are giving is for one year. So what is the surprise inside? So this is the final certificate that you get with your name printed on that and with, a, uh, with all these things, with the certificate ID, everything, the date of issue, everything will come on this. So the surprise here is that, so you can see, choose MedLearn today at 100, chap 100 chapters, sorry 10 chapters 100, 100 651 objective elements at your fingertips at rupees fifteen thousand. but there is a catch here so who all have attended this webinar this webinar we are giving this course at only 50 percent off which is at seven thousand five hundred. the complete comprehensive coverage of nabh fifth edition standards so every standard Every chapter, every object or element will be given in detail at just 7,500. So 15,000 at 50% off, which is at 7,500. So the offer is valid till 22nd or for the first 100 customers. So please note down the number if you need any other questions to be answered like 63, 64, 
512505 you can directly message or whatsapp or call to this number so there are people who will be helping you out for this okay so no i i just need a help i don't need any help here i can directly get on to the course you can just make sure that so just go to medlearn.com so you can just go to medlearn.com just click on store or you can directly go to store.medlearn.com where we'll keep you the url in the chat box so you can directly go here you will get an nabh option here select that so if you are already a, a person you whom you have a account just click on login or else just click on sign up just give your name mobile number and uh, the password so you can just log in or if you have a login you can just give that just click on nabh so this is medlearn is not only with respect to nabh you can get any healthcare courses if you are looking for we have courses with respect to nurses we have courses with all the things so when you go here just click on the training programs so you will get a page with all the nabh things so it is 15000 here but just wait for 5 minutes you can see this this course at only 50% off which is at 7500 just go here the course is already added to your cart go there just click give your address and just here directly it will be applied 7500 enter the code it you need not enter the code it comes by default complete your payment process your course will be there at your phone okay so just log into store.medlearn.com so that it will be uh, directly you will be able to get the course store.medlearn.com i think subashri you can just type that or i also typed here so you can also reach us to this number if you have any doubts or any concern so just people who have attended the webinar we are giving this chance at only 50% off for the complete course it is for one year but you can complete it even in one month or two months based upon your time availability okay yes so once again thanks everyone who has joining thanks elizabeth ma'am so for taking out your time okay because we started on time we should end also on time that is what is the way how medlearn works okay fine so we started exactly by 310 we are closing it by 415 that's okay i think so because it's okay sometimes 5 minutes delay thank you ma'am thank you on time so thanks thank you. everyone uh, you thank can you get so back much. to us on 63645125050 or info@medlearn.com or you can directly go to store.medlearn.com and you can make sure that you get your offer thank you guys thanks thank you